All right, y'all, I got some incredibly exciting stuff for you today. Got some rotors, we got some brake pads, we got some oil. I guess you can probably guess what's going down here. I'm gonna set these down because it's fucking heavy as hell. Uh, so we're doing a little oil change on the Civic and front brake pads. The pads look fine, but it's clearly not fine. Like they are grinding. So we're doing rotors and pads. I definitely like changed these pads, the front left, when they like got to the metal. So it's already probably should replace the rotors anyways. Uh, say we're going to do that. If you guys are buying pads, buy them from fucking AutoZone. Then you can warranty them, bro. I paid $165 for all this shit. And I can just bring my rotors and pads back and get refunded. So I just saved $165. If I took this to a shop, I'm sure I said this before, but if I took this to a shop, this shit would probably cost $300, $400. So, and I'd be out of the car probably, well, I guess I could probably still drive it later, but this should probably take me a fucking hour and I've probably saved with the oil change and the brake pads 300 to 500 bucks so I literally just had to pay for the oil got Walmart brand personally I don't think it really matters what brand you get as long as you're changing it out as much as you should be I literally paid like 24 bucks for the oil and the filter I'm gonna get refunded for everything else so 25 bucks and we'll be good as new don't forget to crack your dang wheels loose before you start jacking stuff up. That's probably the worst thing in the world. You get the car on jack stands and you realize uh, the fucking wheels will just spin while you're trying to loosen them up. Also, don't mind all the oil on the ground. It's just E36 things. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the brakes just because it's the least messy thing to do. I also gotta rotate the tires while we're in here. I think it's good to do it every oil change. At least that's what I do. Uh, I would do the rotation at the same time, but I kinda gotta jack up the rear. Loud ass fit extra. I gotta jack up the rear because the back left wheel is still on the ground I gotta keep the front up high so I can do the oil change and I had to jack up the car weird because I can't slide under the front because the Civic puts the front jack point like way back here so brakes oil change tire rotation I will just leave these wheels off though make life easier Good thing about these front, oh, these front wheels, so they don't have the stupid electric e-brake. It's just a good old classic brake setup. So it looks like we got some twelves, maybe for the caliper bracket. Maybe a 17 for, or I don't know what this is. Maybe a 12 for the uh, caliper part that holds the brake pads. Then a 17 for the actual caliper bracket mounting point. Good thing is this one doesn't have any freaking Allen keys. That shit's kind of obnoxious. So I don't really know, unless it's not these pads. So these look fine and they're still pad material. Definitely felt like the front, right? Alrighty, 
so I did guess correctly. Once again, I'm still on a freaking roll here. A 17 and a 12. Um, it is strange. I guess I should have tried to pay more attention. I just kind of assumed that it was the front right. There's nothing glaringly obviously wrong here. But we already have the parts. I'm already fucking halfway there, so might as well replace it. But... I don't know. I guess we'll see once we start taking stuff off. But I mean, it looks pretty fine. Mostly there's some weird sort of like scoring that looks strange. I don't know if there's like heat spots or what. I guess we'll find out. There was like an insane, I took the rear wheel off to just to double check. And there was like an, an absurd amount of freaking brake dust that came off of it. like an abnormal amount, but that one seems fine too, so I don't know what the heck is going on here. Good old mallet to knock things loose. I go in the right way. So it's a good idea to check that. These bad boys certainly weren't coming loose on the road, I can tell you that much. I'll make sure I have everything loose before I actually completely pull anything off. Take another shower after this. Didn't really think that one through. Okay, those look like, oh, I guess maybe that's an axle thing. There's a good bit of gunk on the back side. Get the good old zipper. Uh, pull off the top one first. The zipper zapper. Definitely on their last legs. Oh, it's right here. Got pad numero uno. Looks totally fine. Pad numero dos. If I can get it out of there. Oh, my legs are fucking sore as hell, boy. Gosh dang, what the fuck is going on here? Oh. This may, my, may make my life harder. I better find out. A smart person, you'll go ahead and hang your calipers up. I am not a smart person. Yep, <laughs> found the culprit. I don't know 
stuff. It'll auto focus on this bad boy. Maybe. Maybe not. Yep. Right here. Yep. <laughs> not supposed to look like that. Family is not at home, so I don't have any support here. Hmm. I gotta think for a minute. <laughs> All right, y'all. <laughs> I really just went full neurodivergent mode on them. <laughs> so not only did I forget to do this in the first place, my my bright ass said. Well, fuck it. I could just put something in between the driver's pedal and the seat, right? Like an old jack candle. Genius idea, right? Stick it in there. Spin the rotors. I'm like, damn, it's still still spinning. It's, it's not tight enough. And then finally clicks. The brakes aren't fucking on the car. So uh, we're putting everything back together, and then we're going to try my idea again. But the best part is, since I was depressing the pedal without the brake pads in, it was pushing the piston all the way out. So I get the pleasure of pushing the piston back and I'm basically doing the whole damn brake job without actually doing anything. So it's all, all part of the fun. So we're gonna push, I already redid the other side. I got a freaking drip of sweat just dancing on my glasses here. Uh, I'm going to push the piston back in, throw everything back together, just finger tight, and then hopefully my bright idea works. Yeah, definitely uh, not my not my brightest moment here, but you guys will get to see how to push the piston back. So it's all, I did this all for you guys, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's all part of the plan. So I just have a good old C clamp here. Take a well usually it's the old pad. This is currently the current pad, but it'll be just fine. Just stick a pad in there so you're not pressing directly on the piston. Just put the C clamp on there. You just squeeze her down. Usually it shouldn't go without or it should go without too much pressure. We don't really need to go all the way because these pads are pretty old, but I'll go enough to where I'm confident that I won't have to do it a second time. Yeah, it's pretty good. All right. Oh. Sit in monkey mode. All right. Throw the bracket back on. Really just wanted to make sure that you guys got the full experience here. Seem to have lost the other bolt here. All right, I'll be back. Let's see if my bright idea works. Moment of truth. I right, probably need an extension. All right. Got a jack handle. Always between the seat and the brakes. Everything's finger tight. Can't move it by hand, but we'll see. These things are probably on there pretty tight. Jesus Christ, what did I do to these things, bro? <laughs> Fucking hell. I gotta get the ideal leverage. Jesus Christ, why is the fucking steering wheel? Shouldn't this shit lock? <laughs> Should it not be locking? I can just move the steering wheel around. 
Somebody online said if you have a push button start, the steering will not lock. They make a sound they make a push start button sound real cool in rap songs until you gotta fucking loosen some wheel spaces off your whip and your shit just turning. So I guess we'll just fucking try again, I guess. I might have to just go to Home Depot and get myself a little zip zip, a zip zip gun. I'm not stoked about that. God damn it. Alright y'all, we've got the big guns literally. Praying to God that this is enough, if not, I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do. Definitely can probably tighten them a little bit less when I put it back together. I think I was nervous about them getting loose, but I used a little bit of Loctite and uh, proper torque spec will probably be just fine if I had to take a guess. Oh my God, that did not feel good. All right, here goes nothing. Hell yeah. Shout out to Milwaukee. Science. All right, both sides are off. God bless. I've got a fancy little impact screwdriver kit. Make sure we don't strip this bad boy out. Or at least, let's do our best to make sure that it doesn't. Basically just set this the way you want it and then just smack it with a mallet. Definitely a good tool to have. So that way you're making sure you have like maximum impact going that way at the same time it's turning so you're not just stripping her out. And now you should actually be able to take this freaking rotor off. God bless. Oh yeah, I need to pull the thing out. Bada boom. Set this up here. Pull these stinky pads out of here. Maybe. Let's freaking go. Alright, so we got all of our 
new pads here. I'm gonna try and make sure you don't get these dirty, obviously. Probably don't put them on the ground like I just did. Now, the pads are side specific, so basically this little squeal thing will go on a certain way. So you wanna make sure, I'm pretty sure it's just flip flop for each side, so you just wanna make sure you grab the right pad. Then, throw our new rotor on. You wanna try and not to touch your greasy hands on that either, but it's more important for the pads than the rotor because the rotor comes like oiled already, so you're gonna to wanna to get brake cleaner so you can wash it off regardless. So we're gonna be doing that so it matters a little bit less. And then obviously for the Civic, you just gonna line up this hole with where that Phillips head goes. Nice and easy. Grab our thingy McDooter. Just thread it in. These little Phillips heads are horrible when they're stripped, but it is kind of nice that it can hold the rotor in place so you're not like fumbling around with it. I'll go ahead and switch sides and give it a little mallet hit. Just make sure it's not going anywhere. Just like how this fucking thing isn't going anywhere. There we go. Then go ahead and put our bracket back on. for now. Now we can go ahead and push the piston back, grab our seat clamp. Loosen her up a little bit. Yeah. I'll loosen her up too much. Just spinning right off of there. This time we're gonna go all the way to the bottom since we're throwing new pads in there and they're gonna have the maximum amount of material. And then when we put our new pads on, we're just gonna throw a little grease on the inside of the pad or the outside of the pad. It just helps with squealing sometimes. As far as I'm aware. So now we put our new pads in, make sure we grab the right pad. So, hey, another So, as you can see, the little clip is on the same side here, so that's the right pad. And then, I believe the other ones are interchangeable, so it doesn't really matter that much. I just use this fucking high temperature disc drum brake wheel bearing grease. I don't know if that's the right thing to use, but that's what I use to do that. AutoZone was trying to like upsell me on fucking. It's like, are you sure you got everything? Are you double sure you got every, you got brake cleaner? I got brake cleaner. You got the you got the grease though. I got the grease though. Trust me, I got the freaking grease, brother. Don't you worry about me. Not a freaking worry about me, brother. 
I'll make all my stupid mistakes on my own accord. Don't you worry. This part's kind of annoying because it's like I don't want to touch the pads with my dirty gloves, but that just means I'm going to get grease all over my hands. Trade-offs, you know. So, this pad goes on the back side. Yeah, slide it in there. Just like that. This is definitely a spray wax towel because it smells hella good. Grab our other pad and grease her up. Probably don't need that much. Don't want it like fucking squeezing out on you. Just plop her down in there. Easy peasy. Now we can just tighten everything back up. Throw some brake cleaner on there and we should be good to go. not seem to be working with me here. My butt better be brake dusty as hell. Shit is not cooperating with me at all. Oh, there we go. Now we just tighten everything up, spray some brake cleaner. Alrighty, everything is nice and tight and clean. Luckily, on your car, you might want to check if you're doing this yourself. Um, if there's a spot, like luckily, there's a spot between the rotor and the like the dust cover, like the metal shield, where you can get your hand back there and clean it. If there isn't that, you probably want to clean the back of the rotor before you 
put everything back together, so something to think about. Luckily, I could just spray some brake cleaner on a towel, spin the rotor, and throw my hand back there. So everything's all nice and clean, tight. We're gonna torque these to 95 foot-pounds. I'm guessing it was at least like 180 before. I'm sure I could have done 90 by hand, even with the freaking steering wheel moving. So the hopefully I can torque these with the steering wheel moving. Should be okay. I've got the jack pole thing in the brake. Hopefully it's tight enough. Let's give it a shot. Oh, <laughs> definitely not. I might need to pump it first. More faith in it working this time, considering how much effort I had to put into fucking trying to get that thing wedged in there. Yeah, shit's not going anywhere. Alright. Torque wrench is already set at 95. Should be good to go. This probably isn't the best angle, but I'm getting a little sweaty and tired here. Bear with me. Fire truck, that ain't good. Uh, now we're gonna rotate the wheels. So I believe I gotta double check. I check this every time. There's like little graphs you can look up online. Obviously, gotta do the other side as well. Front wheels go straight back. The rear ones come forward, but you switch them, switch sides on them. That's for front wheel drive cars. If you have a rear wheel drive car, I believe it's probably the opposite. So yeah, we'll do that. You can drain the oil, fill it back up. Should be ready for the road. Brake job has been finished. Tires have been rotated. I right, just gotta drain this dang oil out of here. I'm about ready to call it a day. Yeah, dang, the stinker's on there. Oh. Ratchet is geeking out. Might be breaking on me. Well, shit. Well, I should still be able to pull it off. God damn, boy, what the fuck? Apparently, I've got a damn history of over tightening things here. Make myself work for it, bro. Get down. Get our pan in position, get our freaking towel ready. Unfortunately, these are the only gloves I have, so I just gotta kinda send it here and try to get the least amount of oil in my gloves as possible. Not a great job, but <laughs> at least it's not on the floor. That's always a, a dub in my eyes. This Civic takes zero W20 oil, which is super convenient when draining the oil because it comes out super fast. The only thing is, it's super weird to check the dipstick because it's so liquidy, like so thin that it like, it doesn't even like read on the dipstick well because it'll just like run off of it. Like this shit's already about to stop on the F80, it took like 
Freaking at least 10 minutes to drain all the oil. Go grab our new filter. What the fuck was that? Hmm. What the hell? Actually, I just spit on my fucking. Well, there's something in my mouth, and it feels like it stung me. Maybe it's just sharp. I don't know what the fuck that was. Hopefully it was just something sharp and not something stinging my fucking tongue. Probably a freaking earwig. <laughs> Little stinker. That's the one right in front of me. Okay, maybe it's just something sharp. It doesn't really sting that much. That was very strange. I always do the drain plug first because the oil filter is like way more likely to make a mess because It's just not like one specific hole. It's like a big giant hole, so it just kind of comes out of fucking everywhere. All right, that's Gucci. Just got to make sure we remember to tighten that down. Now we can hit our oil filter here. Make sure it's lined up good. Hopefully it's not insanely tight like everything else. Oh, it's pretty freaking tight. God damn, boy, what do I be doing to these things, bro? Bro, just be angry or something. Oh, fucking hell. Damn, I probably should have ran the engine. It probably would have made it easier. No, we cannot do that. See if I can get a better grip if I move this bed boy. Whew. Now we got it moving. Barely. There we go. It's pretty much inevitable that I make a mess, so we're trying to just <laughs> minimize it as much as possible. Whew. There will always be a fucking shit ton of oil still in the oil filter, so always like pull it off the way it's on there, and then doop. Hit it, one, hit it with one of those. Doing a great job with the whole not making a mess thing, but we're getting her done. That is for sure. Got a new filter. Luckily, you can take all the oil that's 
all over your fingers and just use that to wipe on the seal a little bit for a better, better seal there. Start it like me. Get her nice and snug. That's probably Gucci. Give it one last wipe down. Tighten up this train bolt and we're good to go. Alrighty, y'all. Just gonna fill this bad boy up with some dang. 0W20, about 3.5 quarts. This old girl should be ready for the road. Let's try our best not to spill here. I don't really feel like grabbing the funnel, which I may be regretting here soon, but. What, what did the wise philosopher once say? You only live once. Living by that right now. Oh man, this is gonna be a tough one. <laughs> Maybe I should get the funnel. Hmm. All right, it gives me more faith. Right, oh, it's pretty solid. NGO. Oh, brother. Just a little bit of a mess. <laughs> Not too shabby. Oh, we still got a while to go. All right, maybe more like 3.7 quarts after this. See how much I spilled. This shit is literally like water. Right, that should be about perfect. Give it a little look see. That's not too shabby. The towel method was definitely a good move, or else we would have made a proper mess. Bloody proper mess in it. I recall it always kind of reads weird until I start the engine so it should be close enough to where we don't blow up the engine and start her up and check her out About right smack dab in the middle. Check it one more time. Dang, boy. That's like literally the perfect spot. Alright, I think we're good to go. She ready for some more food delivery. <laughs> Hell yeah. Alright, thanks for watching. 
I would do some driving, but I don't know if anybody wants to see a civic driving clip. It's not too exciting, but I'm about to go hit the gym, go work. Catch you guys next time.